Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In this episode, we are gonna take a look at the top 20, I slapped myself right there, the top 10 web development and design trends for 2020. What's gonna happen in the future? Mysteries, is your toaster in your kitchen gonna take over? Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna be taking a look at a possible... Let's do magic, we haven't done magic in a long time. Say stop somewhere. This one. All right, so you picked the queen, because you're a queen, the queen of diamonds. So we're gonna take this queen, and we're actually gonna drop it away, like the other cards. So now watch, we're gonna get it back right here. Oh, there we go. I also wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. We started 2020, it's time to pick up some new and exciting skills, and they offer you a lot of those. So if you're interested in web development, design, and a lot of other awesome things such as video editing, and maybe to create your own business tips and tricks, they have classes on all of those things. So they gave me a link in the description. If you click on that, you're gonna get two months for free. Let's start this year off exploring new skills, getting more creative, and improving ourselves. So click the link in the description below and get the two months for free. And the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So it's fairly cheap. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. And let's talk about the upcoming trends in web development. Let's start off with the worst defender in this class. In 2020, I don't wanna think about browsers anymore. I don't want to feel like things are just incompatible with this browser, things work in this browser. So what I want to see is a unification. Everybody hold hands. It's 2020. We need to accept each other. We need to have the same features and <laughs> have the same things. This sounds like communism. So for 2020, I need all of the browsers to have the same APIs, the same functionality, work together and internet explorer you can just leave you were never liked we just just go just go away i once had a client that wanted me to do a website for him so i did it went really well uh, but he also wanted me to make it compatible in internet explorer so i i gave him basically a sandwich but it was rotten that's that's the whole story. When it comes to CSS, you know, I think CSS is in a relatively nice position right now, but there's still a few things that I just don't like. The biggest problem we had so far in this few years was that it was hard to position things. It was just, the most basic things were just very hard to do. You have to float things and I don't wanna float. I've been floating enough with my magic tricks. Uh, I'm not David Copperfield, so I don't wanna continue doing that while I'm coding. So we moved away from that. We started doing the flexing, which is nice. I like flexing a lot. And then we went to the grid and just everything worked out perfectly. However, my issues are with some animations. I like animations a lot and certain things annoy me, such as give me a, a, the ability to animate the border of something. Like, I want to have a text and the border just animates in, maybe on an input or something. But no, right now what we have to do is add a pseudo after element to it and then transition that and move it its position and then add an overflow hidden. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry because who knows these days? It's just tricky, hacky little things that you have to do to make it work. So what I want to do is have features and animations that I can use on things that I couldn't use before, such as border. Let me animate gradient too. Why can I not animate gradient? Just let me pick out two colors and transition it to the other two. How hard can it be, Mr. CSS? So currently the way you would animate a gradient, you would have to have one gradient and then you overlay a gradient on top of it and then you add opacity zero to this and animate that out and this one pops back in but who likes that nobody other than that i do not want to use sass sass is amazing i love it but why not have all the features from sass built right into css don't give me 10,000 libraries to use. Maybe have them available if other people like it, but have all those functionalities that make SAS so great inside CSS. And then it's just another less thing to install and worry about. Pop-ups, ad block blockers, and cookie pop-up messages should be deemed illegal. 
if you do them, you should serve 10 years in prison. And if you, you didn't do it and your uh, company forced you to do it, then I'm gonna send to that company rotten flowers every day saying that they're bad at their job. Next up, I want dark mode to be available on most websites. You know, at night, I don't want the screen to be blasting my face, especially when my girlfriend is sleeping next to me and I'm watching my favorite website, the Y Hamster, and I'm navigating across it. I don't want to wake her up. That's not my goal. My goal is to enjoy myself uh, watching certain clips and not distract anybody else on max volume. And it's actually not that hard to implement as well. So I don't want to see other websites that have a blue background color and weird background colors. So just keep things simple, just have white and give me the ability to make a dark mode. And that's not even hard to do. It's like two lines of CSS code and most of it is gonna work if you experiment with the filters. So dark mode, I think should be an obligatory thing. Next up, I wanna see PWAs really taking over the world this year. I rarely install any apps on the App Store anymore. Uh, so just let me go to a website and add it to my home screen without downloading downloading anything. Also, it's over HTTPS, so it's more secure. I'm not gonna have that many issues. And you can make it run just as well as the native apps in the App Store. So I really want PWAs to take over this year. Oh, and the nice thing is you are way more flexible when it comes to developing. Uh, you can just use any JavaScript framework to build out a PWA. JavaScript frameworks, my greatest enemy of this world. I don't like any of them, I'm gonna be honest. They're good in their own way, but I think we need to find a middle ground here. Just have some kind of native web components inside uh, the browsers and JavaScript. Just have the core functionality there of building out these web components. And after, if you really want, you can build these micro frameworks that make them work a bit differently. But I don't wanna relearn a whole new technology uh, just to kind of achieve the same thing. So if you do it in React and then you pick up Vue, it's, you're kind of building out the same thing, but it works totally differently. And the layout and the design and everything that you do works completely different. So let's have one kind of, you, what's this? What am I doing? Next up, I wanna talk a bit about mobile design and mobile first design and why I think it's extremely boring. <laughs> Mobile design is, 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 I'm not sure what the solution here is, but the problem is it's so extremely boring because you just have these one column layouts and just nothing interesting is ever happening inside. So a lot of people also ask me, Ed, why are you developing desktop first and not mobile first? Like everybody on Reddit is telling me. Well, I develop desktop first because I feel like I'm more creative. I feel like I can mess around more uh, with moving things, positioning things, creating interesting columns and layouts. And when it comes to mobile, I feel like, oh, well, I just need to add a display block to everything. So I'm not sure again what the solution here is, but we need to figure something out. We need to get together and just figure out a way to make the displays either larger or just come up with something new. So I think I have a solution for that mobile design thing. Because so far in 2017, 18, 19, we've been really accustomed to this minimalistic, flat illustration websites. You've seen them everywhere. From, they all got it from Andra.com. They have a special offer right now, it's 9.99. Discount code, DevEd. That's a lie. Everything is free on that website. So anyway, what if we start in, or, so anyway, what if we start to incorporate more 3D? Why are we fixated to make everything column layout like this? Just have a 3D world and a 3D space and maybe have things clickable there and pinching and zooming, expanding. This is how my mom made me. Just came out like this. I feel like there's gonna be like that one guy that's gonna just, something's gonna pop in his head and he's gonna figure it out and it's gonna be like, okay, this is the way we're gonna make 3D layouts these days and we don't need multiple columns or pages or anything. Blender.com, special discount, 9.99. Next up, I really wanna see more voice integration with websites and interactive applications in the browser because we've seen this trend so far on phones that we have the ability to talk to Siri and Google 
why not have more of that in the browser? Or let me just navigate things. I don't wanna to reach to the mouse or touch the screen. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna say something. Hey, Google, hey, hey, site, add those socks to my cart, to my shopping cart. Yes, I wanna pay with my card. Oh, you need the card number? Four, two, eight, seven. All right, that's not a good idea. Let's move on. And last but not least, I really wanna point out artificial intelligence because I think it's gonna be a big thing and quite important. How many times were you on YouTube and you searched up a video or you searched for a specific topic or you went to the subscription page? Probably not that much. I spend most of my time on the homepage because I get recommended a lot of content that is interesting to me. So it's artificial intelligence and machine learning going on there to figure out what videos I'm watching the most and what I like to watch and how much I like to watch. Now this is quite complex, but I think it's very important, especially if you have a website that has products and things of that that sort, you probably want to recommend things that people looked at a lot or maybe something in that category to increase your sales. So artificial intelligence is very cool, it's very difficult and machine machine, machine learning is extremely difficult uh, and I'm probably planning to learn it but it's gonna take a few years. Uh, so this is my last video, we're gonna see each other in 2020. Thank you so much for watching, thank you for buying the HTML and CSS course. And until next time, someone might take over my YouTube channel.